Have you ever wanted to control your entities in Home Assistant on a certain date and time, or even on a recurring basis? Well, now you can, and it's super easy with Home Assistant's new local calendar integration. This was released back in the end of December or the end of 2022, and they've made some improvements now in the latest release in January of 2023. So I'm gonna go over the installation of the calendar, which is very easy, and then do a couple of automations to show you how you can use the calendar to automate things within your Home Assistant environment. So let's get started. Okay, so before I get a bunch of comments about, yes, there's always been a calendar integration, that is true. There has always been a calendar integration in Home Assistant, or at least for a long time. It was a Google-based or a cloud-based calendar, and I've used the Google Calendar uh, myself for a long time. What they've done now is added the local calendar option, uh, and this is a full feature calendar that allows you to do a number of things that you would normally do on a calendar. I can run both my Google Calendar and I can run my local calendar at the same time in Home Assistant. The beauty of that is that you can have multiple calendars that do different things. If you want to have a calendar that does lighting, you want to have a calendar that does sprinklers or a calendar that does blind, whatever you want to do, you can have a calendar for each different thing. And then you can add events to those different calendars to automate things within Home Assistant on a schedule. So the way we do this is it's super simple. Uh, you just click on add integration and then we're gonna add a calendar integration. So we can search for calendar here, local calendar, and you're gonna give it a name. And I'm just gonna call this calendar number two for the fun of it and we'll submit. And then you'll see down here once it's finished, that you'll have your all your calendars that you use. You access your calendars on the side. Once you set up the calendars, they will be on the side panel over here. And you can just click on calendar. And then you'll have all the calendars that you need lined up right here. Now this is my demo system. So I don't have my Google calendar on here, but I do run Google and a local calendar on my production system. And this is it, I mean, this is all you do. A couple of neat features about this. Number one is you can add events to the calendar by clicking the little add event button. Let me get out of the way. So there's add event. And this is just like any other calendar. Um, you can just add event name to it. You can add a description if you want to. This is where you choose which calendar you want it to go into. Either the this calendar or this calendar or lighting calendar or whatever you want to do. I'll put it on calendar number two since that's the new calendar. And then you can choose a date and time that you want this thing to happen. So let's say 7, um, 45 or whatever. And then no repeat, or you can do recurrence. So we can do yearly, monthly, daily. And I covered all this in like my intro video or my uh, update video back in December. Uh, click on daily, for example, and then you can choose the repeat interval and you can tell it when you want it to end on or after, just like you would in a normal calendar. I'm going to say no repeat on this one and I'm going to add the event. And now we can look at it in either the month view, the week view, this type of day view, and this type of day view. If you do the day view of this one right here, this is last seven days in a list and this is today's date in a list. Now what happens if you want to make a change to the calendar? That is something that they've added in the latest release in January of 23 or 2023. Click on the event. And then you can edit the event and you can change all of the parameters just like you would a normal calendar. So if I wanted to change this to 750, for example, then I just save it and now it's changed to 750. This is the basis of the calendar. There's nothing fancy about how the calendar works. It works like a calendar should work. So the differences between 2022 December release and the January 2023 release are the ability to add features directly in your Google cal Calendar integration as well. So you can manage your, manage your local events and you can add events to your Google Calendar, which to me is amazing because otherwise I would have to log into my Google Calendar as a separate tab and do all this stuff. Now I can do it directly from Home Assistant if your calendar is set up to read write mode on Google, by the way, that has to be something you need to do. And it says here, you can create new events in your Google Calendar straight from within Home Assistant. And of course, we talked about the ability to edit support for events. That is new. And then lastly, support for monthly variations and the recurrence rules has been added. This includes repetitions like on the 20th day or the first Wednesday or whatever. So you can tell it to do things variably in, within your recurrence rather than just doing a straight recurrence. So that's really neat. 
So that's how you do stuff in the calendar and that's the updates to the calendar. What makes this really neat is to be able to automate against these events. By the way, if you are automating stuff and you're testing, you need to make sure that you set the event at least 15 minutes before. Uh, and it tells you about that in calendar automations down here. If you don't set it for 15 minutes away, since the calendars are polled every 15 minutes, your event is not gonna happen. This is not useful for a quick reminder in five minutes. Calendars typically don't get updated that often. So your event, or at least not within the next 15 minutes, so your event has to be 15 minutes or farther into the future or it will not trigger an automation. So keep that in mind. So if we go over to automations now, we'll create a quick automation based on the calendar. At least we will try to. So I'll create an automation with the little button down here. You can see it down here, create automation. And I'm gonna start with an empty automation. And this is, again, very easy to do. I can add a trigger. It's gonna be calendar. I'm gonna choose which calendar I want. And this is where you have multiple calendars. If you have a lighting calendar or a sprinkler system calendar, irrigation, whatever, you can choose which calendar you wanna trigger an event against. So we'll click on calendar here. We'll use this new one that I just created. You can do an event start, event end. Uh, you can do an offset. So if you want to be notified 15 minutes before the event or five minutes or whatever, make sure you put an offset in here. And then the actions could be all kinds of stuff. Uh, the example they use here for automating is to do a persistent notification. So this is the example on their website where they talk about how to set this up. And you would do a persistent notification. So we'll just do that now. Call the service. Uh, persistent notification. And then we will give the message um, like they do here. Now you can't do this YAML stuff within the UI right now. So what we'll do now is we will go over to edit this in the YAML mode. Don't be scared. It's super easy. Just make sure you have the columns lined up. You can just copy examples all day long. I would also get rid of this offset if you're not using it because it's incorrect the way it posts it up here. But you can take the action section, the whole thing, you can copy it, and you can paste it in the action section right here. And you'll have now an action that sets a service or calls a service called persistent notification. And then the message, message is gonna be the calendar event summary and the calendar event start time. And if we look over here, you can look at all of the different automation trigger variables for the calendar. You could potentially take any of these events and put them in your automation. Uh, and then you can put in the message things that you want to see in there. You could see the start and end. So if you want to know when something starts and ends, you could put that in that notification message and you would see it. Uh, and then all these other things you can do within the calendar setup itself in the automations. And then we will save that, give it a name, demo calendar notify, save it. And now we have a notification or an automation rather that will go off whenever the calendar itself has an event. And again, like I said, this is useful if you're gonna do lighting or something else like that. If you wanna turn something off, this is notifications. There's another option over here that talks about how to do this with a um, like a light schedule. So we have the same thing. You would do something like this, where you'd have calendar start, calendar end, and then you would do something like a value template where your condition would be which thing it was doing. Front lights in trigger dot calendar event summary. Again, you could copy all this in here and just use it the way it is. And then if the trigger event equals start, you would turn it on because you're pulling in the start and the end time. So you could start a light on at this certain time and you could turn it off. And the way that works is if you look at my calendar, let's go back over to calendars here. We just, uh, on the notification, we just started an event or an automation based on the start time. But every calendar has an end time or an, uh, every calendar entry has an end time. So this is 7.50 a.m. to 8 a.m. And so at 8 a.m., you would get the end event from the calendar that would send it over to the automation, and then it would do the light turn off. So this is another example of turning on 
and off a light based on a calendar event. So you could do recurrence where you could have the light always come on at a certain time and then turn off at a certain time. So an example would be if you're trying to get ready in the morning for work and you want to have a light come on at exactly the same time every day, uh, this is one way you can do that. Uh, there's obviously other ways to set stuff up in automations, uh, but this is something that gives you a recurrence or if you want to do it every Monday at a certain time, that's something you can do here as well. So the calendar gives you a lot of options. It gives you a lot of ways to store things, get alerts for them, and then automate specific things. So this is very simple, not a lot to it, but I just wanted to show you the power of the calendar and what it does within Home Assistant. So when you have an event come into your mobile device, it'll look something like this based on how we set it up. We have the event, the word event, the type of event, which would be record video, and then the time would be 123.6.0700. And that's the time the event at. So if we look over here at our calendar events here in the example that we just used, we say event trigger dot calendar event summary at trigger dot calendar event start. And that's what you see in the notification. So that's an example of what the notification looks like. All right, not a lot to it. It's a super simple in integration, but I think it's gonna be very useful to use. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. Uh, if you like the video, do that old thumbs up thing. And if you're not a subscriber and 25% of you are, but 75% of you are not subscribers, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps push the videos up so that other people can see the content and I would really appreciate it. If you're a channel member, thank you so much for becoming a channel member and supporting what I do here and stay tuned for other videos. Thanks for watching.